All right, how's it going, y'all? So this right here is the RS2423 Plus, and this right here is a DS923 Plus. These are both Synology NASes that actually run the exact same operating system. And there's a lot of competing products like this that Synology has. The rack mount units are really nothing more than just standard Synologies with a different hardware inside, and sometimes not even that, on a rack mount chassis. And before you buy one of these rack mount units, watch this video because we're gonna go over the downsides to buying a rack mount unit, as well as the upsides, as well as just the overall differences. And this is gonna be for people who are completely new to this stuff. So there's gonna be some very basic stuff here, but it's really important to know. And I've had a lot of clients who've gotten themselves in trouble because these units are really loud, really high power draw, and have a whole slew of other things you've got to take into account when you're buying a unit like this. All right, before we get started, I do want to say Synology did send this to me for free and I do to keep it, but they don't get to review this video before it goes live or anything like that. And I want to talk about what rack mounting is. And if you're completely new, I'm going to go over kind of the basics here. And if you already know what rack mounting is, you can skip that. There's chapters down below. So rack mount is basically a standardized way of putting servers, networking gear, a lot of audio gear, and things like that in a cabinet where there is a set width. In this case, it's 19 inches. That's pretty much universal. And everything has a certain height and it's measured in U's, so rack units. So this right here is a 2U rack unit. And the way it works is it's designed to be really nice and clean so you can have a whole bunch of servers all stacked up on one top of each other, all getting enough cooling, as well as all fitting in well and being able to be replaced. I have a massive server rack upstairs. I'll go ahead and show some nice pretty B-roll of that. And it slots right in. This thing has rails. You literally just slide it in and it works really well. And so that's what rack mounting is. It is really commonly used in data centers as well as just networking closets. And when you buy something that's rack mounted, there is a huge assumption that is made there that I don't think a lot of people realize. And the majority of time you buy something that's rack mounted, the company who's producing it is assuming that noise is not an issue. Yes, they might make it a little bit more quiet, but really, for the most part, that's probably be going to be because it'll lower power draw. But when you buy something that's rack mountable, in general, a company who is selling it to you is assuming that noise is not really an issue. And this is a perfect example of it. I'm just gonna go ahead and boot this thing up really quick. And we're going to show you how loud this thing is. That first spin up was actually just the fans going. So it's not actually at its steady state yet because it goes through and spins up a little bit faster to test the fans when it first starts. But this right here is the level of noise that this box is out of the box. And it is loud. And that is one of the key reasons why you might not want to rack mount things. Let me go ahead and turn this off so you can hear me. But this unit out of the box is incredibly loud. And I'm also somebody who has servers. I have a Dell R630. I have a Supermicro 2U server that I built. None of them are as loud as this. And that is the most important thing that you need to take into account whenever you're buying rack mount stuff is it is not designed to be quiet. Now, I do also want to note really quick, I actually manually rewrote the fan file for this unit, and I'm probably going to do that in a video. I'll leave a link if I do down the description below to actually make it quieter, to make it more useful, and I've had no problems with it. But that's one of the key things about rack mount stuff is companies aren't really trying to, oh, we'll, we'll make it a little bit quieter because there is an assumption that this is going in a room that is completely by itself, and that noise is really not a factor. And so the rack mounted Synology stuff tends to be a lot louder than other equipment. Another really important thing you need to look at whenever you're buying rack mount Synology stuff is the depth. Oh goodness. So this is pretty much a full depth server. So half depth racks are not gonna cut it for this. This is also one that pretty much requires rails. You can't just front mount it. So there are two different ways to rack rack mount equipment. There is where you just front rack it. That's where you basically just screw it in with these four posts up front and lock it in. And that's 
what most switches use and most lighter equipment uses, but most of the bigger Synologies that are rack mountable have to have rails on them. And that's the other way you can mount stuff. With rails, you essentially have a post on the front and back on either side, and that way the weight is more evenly distributed. So that's a really key thing that you need to look into whenever you're looking to get a rack mount Synology is you need to make sure that your rack is the proper depth. All right, so there is a ton of other things to talk about, but this thing is taking up a ton of room in front of me. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it off screen and go grab my laptop and we can talk through and look at Synology's product page and see why buying rack mount equipment a lot of times does not make sense unless you really need to rack mount it. All right, so now that I've got a little bit more room, I wanna go through and talk about what to look at when you're buying a Synology that's rack mountable. So the very first thing I wanna talk about is the increased cost when you're buying rack mount equipment. So I'm gonna pull up two units that are identical in every way except for two exceptions. That is the DS1821 Plus and the RS1221 Plus. They're the exact same CPU inside, same RAM, same built-in ethernet ports, same everything except for two things are different. One, the RS1221 Plus is rack mountable. Two, it does not include two M.2 NVMe slots. And that's it. Those are the only two differences. So this unit is rack mountable, but does not have built-in NVMe slots. So you have to add that on if you wanna use it. And there's a huge price difference. This unit is 1300 US dollars, whereas the DS1821 Plus, which is the exact same unit, except for those two differences, is $1,000. That is a 30% price increase just to have it rack mountable. And you also lost those two NVMe slots. So that is one of the downsides to rack mountable, is you pay the rack tax. Not only are you going to get a unit that is louder, but you're also going to pay more for it and possibly even get less features. And Synology honestly has a phenomenal desktop lineup. If we go to their site and we go under their products, under their tower services, this guy right here, this DS3622XS Plus, is an absolute beast when it comes to storage for the vast majority of users. I have a client who scaled this NAS to 500 terabytes by buying two expansion units and filling all 36 drives up. These desktop units pretty much can store as much data as you can throw at them. So it's really something to look at. If you're somebody who does not have a rack, definitely, definitely, definitely check out these desktop units because they are so much quieter, pretty cost effective in most cases compared to their unit and don't really have a performance penalty that you would expect out of getting it. Now I will say, rack mount equipment is almost always going to be able to handle cooling better. Rack mounted units are designed where the hard drives are up front, then you've got your RAM and CPU, and then fans, or fans in the middle. So the way they work is they're pulling air through the entire system and forcing upon all components. So even things like RAM are getting actively cooled because of the fans. Most desktop units do not have this. And in general, rack mount equipment has way higher cooling potential just because it's okay to turn the fans up to 12. But the vast majority of users don't really need that. And so for most people, I would not worry about it too much. One more thing that rack mount equipment does have that desktop units do not with Synology is dual power supplies, at least optionally on a fair amount of them. Most people do not need redundant power supplies because having a power supply failure is pretty rare. Now, if you do have a rack with AB power, that is a real use case for having that redundant power. But for most people, dual power supplies are not that critical. All right, so now we've gone over a lot of the cons of buying Synology rack mount equipment. Let's also talk about if you are looking at buying rack mount units, which I have rack mount units and they're very nice to have, what you should look for. And I'm gonna talk about some of my favorite rack mount units in the Synology lineup. And by far my favorite one is the one I was just talking about is the RS1221 Plus. This guy right here is a phenomenal unit. The one thing I wish it had was the ability to actually 
have more expansion. I'd love it if this was like a RS1621 plus, so you'd have a full eight bay expansion unit. But other than that, it is a great unit. Eight bays, reasonably priced for rack mount equipment with a lot of performance underneath the hood and it is very quiet. So this is probably one of my favorite units to recommend to clients. It is able to be racked just in the front by just using the front ears so you don't need a deep rack. And if we look at our specs over here, we can see that it's actually a fairly quiet unit out of the box. So Synology does a great job with actually reporting fan noises and testing on all their units. This is the first thing I go to anytime I'm recommending a rack mount unit to a client is you look at their noise levels. And so this one actually has two different ones because there are two different units that you can buy. You can either buy the standard RS1221 plus or the 1221 RP plus for redundant power supplies. And if you look, that redundant power supply increases the noise a ton because in that unit, the power supply is actually the really loud part of it. And having redundant power supplies means the power supplies have to be smaller and are designed to be hot swappable. And those constraints mean that the fans run way louder than they do with the stock power supply in the RS1221 Plus. In general, when you're reading these, every single manufacturer is going to test the sound differently, though thankfully Synology tests sound all the same way for all their Synologies. So what I generally recommend to people is something that is okay to be in the same room as employees without any covering in between is anything under 40 to 45 decibels should be fine. And a lot of those cases, the sound of the hard drives clicking is actually going to be the louder part. Then anything over 50 starts being a nuisance and anything over 55 is not fun to be around at all. And this is the exact noise level I check every single time I'm looking at a new Synology that's rack mounted. Let's also go into the Synology from the beginning of this video, the RS2423 Plus. And as you can see, it is over that 45 decibel limit and is not something I would ever stick an employee next to. In this case, the redundant power supply was pretty minimal noise increase because the vast majority of the sound is actually from the fans. And so this is one of those things where you kind of have to get used to it. So in general, over 45 decibels on Synology's testing, you probably do not want to be in the same room with it, at least for extended periods of time. But as long as it's in a separate room, it should be fine. And for this unit in particular, I actually SSH'd in and rewrote the fan curve to make it much quieter without me worrying about any of the noises. All right, so the next part of this that we really need to talk about is Synology required drives. And this plagues the rack mount units way more, but it also does come into play with a few of the desktop units. So whenever you're buying a rack mount unit from Synology, you want to check and see if it's going to require these Synology drives. And this is a soft but pretty annoying requirement that they have where the NAS will still fully work However, it will show up as orange the entire time that the pool is at risk if you do not have Synology branded drives in there. I cover in other videos, I'm probably gonna do another one soon, and I wanna talk about how to check and kind of what to do on that case. So for me, I deploy these units all the time to clients without buying Synology drives. They cost about 50% more than their competitors, and I don't see any major benefit that is worth that 50%. They do perform very well, and they've got great integration, but it's also 50% more. So it's hard for me to justify, and I will often tell clients, hey, listen, you're gonna save a ton of money doing this, it's up to you. You won't get official Synology support, but everything will work. The volume will just show up as orange. And so I often will ship them without it. I cover in other videos, I'll leave a link down in the description below to that one. And so the way you can tell which NASs are going to require Synology drives versus recommend them, if that makes sense, is right now the rule seems to be anything that is an excess unit is gonna require it, or if it has 12 bays or more built into the head unit. So that seems to be what it is now. 
these rules do kind of constantly change, so don't guarantee that. I'm gonna show you the way to properly tell. So when we click on a unit, I'm gonna click on two different units. First, I'm going to do that RS2423 plus, and then I'm gonna do the, the 1221 plus. And we are going to go into the spec system and scroll down to the hard drive section. All right, so I've just gone, opened up the spec page, scrolled down to storage on both of them, and we've got them side by side so we can see exactly the wording that you need to look for to tell if Synology is going to require these drives. And by the way, if you're outside the US, this wording is actually different. So I would recommend pulling the US version of the site if you wanna use me for a verification to double check, but the wording is different in the global section and other ones on which ones are actually going to require Synology NAS drives. So right here, this is the RS2423 Plus. This is a unit that will throw a warning and constantly flash an orange, hey, this volume could fail if you don't put Synology drives in there. And this is the statement it has under its storage notes. It is strongly recommended that you install drives listed on the compatibility list. That is something that shows up on multiple of these. But right here, this is the part Storage pool and volume creation process may fail when using unverified drives. Synology is unable to provide technical support for devices using unsupported components. That piece is what you look for. And if you see that, it means that they are going to require Synology drives. There are ways around it, but that is a significant cost increase. If you're at a large company and 2000 bucks is nothing because you're saving money versus what Dell was going to sell you, you probably don't care that much. But if you're a smaller company or a home user, you, you may find that it is worth it to buy whatever drives you're going to anyway and just install them here. And on the right-hand side, just to show what this one means, hey, even if you install a drive that is not on the compatibility list, all it does is it flashes a warning right when you install the volume the first time, you click OK, and it goes away forever. And so that is the difference, and that's a key component to whenever you're buying a rack mount Synology. All right, well, that's going to be pretty much it for this video. Before you ever buy a rack mount unit, you need to know that you're somebody who's okay with rack mount stuff. And that may be obvious to a lot of people, but it's definitely something you need to think about before you buy rack mount Synologies. Really come in here and check out that noise parameter because it's really useful to have. And also, if you're not somebody who already has a rack, especially a deep rack, Really look at those desktop units because there's not a lot of cases where you're actually leaving performance on the table in a way that you'll ever feel going with a desktop Synology rather than a rack mount Synology. If you want to hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below and have a good one. Bye.